our vision here is to create environments where people can encounter Christ and be empowered to advance the kingdom. We don't do anything special, but he is here in this place. All we do is make space for him to do it. We didn't plan this band. Oh my gosh, that was beautiful. He's here. He is walking among us. He is in this room walking among us. If you don't sense his presence, just acknowledge that he's here because he is. You don't go into your home and not acknowledge your family. Acknowledge that he's here. Acknowledge that he's here and you'll you'll begin to sense his presence. Right? Whew. Hello, Lord. God, you're awesome. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. You're so awesome. You're so amazing. You're so incredible. We know you're here walking among us. We know Yeshua, you're here walking among us. We know Holy Spirit, you're here walking among us. Some you're, you're putting your hand on their shoulder, some on their head, some around their waist. We know that you're here in this room. Though some of us can't see you, we know that you're here. And we can feel the weight of your spirit. So if you had a marked encounter today and wish to give to this ministry or tithe here or our One House campaign, you can do so online at the barn.church or at any of the giving boxes. Um, anytime during, during the service today, I already uh, paid our tithe online at the Church Center app, which is pretty doggone cool and easy. Speaking of one house, so we are raising one and a half million dollars for a building. Some buildings we looked at need very little renovations to make it ready, but they're pricier than what we're raising. Other buildings we've looked at are significantly lower, but need significant renovations. So we, and just in prayer, we're like, we'll raise, you know, one and a half million dollars and, and just, you know, kind of go from there. And the reason that we have some urgency around this is because um, the Dawsons who have generously allowed us to use this space for a year and a half, they are incredible. They've been really, I mean, hello, they're incredible. Scott's around here somewhere. They've been really praying and seeking the Lord. They have two locations, right? And which is awesome, um, but they're really feeling the need to be, to do some mobile archery and having two spaces makes that difficult to go on the road because somebody's got to be here and somebody's got to be there. So this place will be vacated very likely at the end of February. So we need a building, y'all. <laughs> um, and there's some possibilities, you know, we, we're exploring and whatnot, but we're not trying to raise one and a half million dollars to blow it. We're trying to be very careful with everything that comes in, but we do have some urgency because we need a, we need a place for the Lord to dwell and for us to meet and gather, gather together. So if you feel led to give over your tithe, to give an offering to the One House campaign, it's all being set aside for a building for us because we know the Lord has something for us. And we know the Dawsons will be incredibly blessed for allowing us to use this space. So we know God loves a cheerful giver. giver. I love paying my tithes here because I really do believe it's good ground. I believe in the work the Lord is doing here. I believe in what he's called us to do. I believe in each and every one of you that you have a specific call and destiny upon your life. And our job is to help you discover that and launch you into doing that. So I do want to share one announcement. We have a special Friday Night Light this coming week. You know, we've been going every other Friday. Well, this coming week would be an off week normally, but it is, and I won't say the name right. Traditionally, we call it Rosh Hashanah, but there's actually a, um, do you know it, Jared? Not in the Hebrew, but it's Feast of Trumpets. It's Feast of Trumpets. Craig Sandert knows how to say it. But anyway, we're celebrating Feast of Trumpets this Friday. Yom Yom Teru. Yom Teru is this Friday. <laughs> and we know the Lord has called us to honor those Hebraic feasts. There's something about them. We are learning about it. Craig is like a bowl full of knowledge. I mean, he just lights up. So he'll be helping us with that service. But we want to celebrate this Friday. So make sure you come. Was that everything I had to say? I hope so. 
We'll see. Huh? Okay. Oh, it's Matthew's birthday. Happy birthday, Matthew. He's 18 today. All right. Now you can start paying all your bills. And then be like, I want to be a kid again. Okay. <laughs> As a five-fold leader, I have to make sure we're all trained to be warriors. Okay. Which means we have to begin to understand. Is somebody going to turn the lights on? Front lights. Thank you. It helps the live streamers. Hi, live streamers. We love you. We see you. We pray for you. We thank you for being here with us. There's people that watch from Arizona. More than just my family, too. That's amazing. Uh, which means we have to begin to understand there's a spirit world. Guys, there's a spirit world. And there's a spiritual battle going on all around us. Okay? But, and this may shock some of you, according to a study from 2009, now I know it's from 2009, it's 14 years ago, it's a Barna study, they found that almost 60% of Christians think that Satan is not actually a living being, but just a symbol of evil. What a great deception. If people don't think he even exists, they fight each other instead of banding together in love and combating him. Hosea 4, 6 says... And I just want to thank Christina, because she's amazing. So I'm thanking you out loud. Praise God. It says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I reject you from being a priest to me. And since you have forgotten the law of God, I will also forget your children. That's Hosea 4, 6. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So 60% of Christians think that Satan is just a representative of evil, but not an actual spirit. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Clearly, in Ephesians 6.12, which I know a lot of you have heard, but it's okay to repeat things. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, plural, against the authorities, plural, against the cosmic powers, plural, over this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. We're fighting rulers that don't live in the physicality of this world. And when the Bible was written, they understood that. They understood there was a spirit world. Mary and Joseph, an angel visited them? So people knew angels demons, all of that. They knew that that stuff was real. And they knew how to combat it. But then knowledge kind of went away. So how close, how close is the spirit world? Roll with me here. Can you show those first two videos? How close? Can you cut the lights real quick? I don't know that we got a chance to test these out. I know Spider-Man. The youth will like it. Look at that. It's right there. The spirit world is that close. You see that? I know that's a movie, but it's a good representation. We'll just show that one, okay, Christina? It's a good rep. You can turn the lights back on. You'll turn them off again in a little bit if you don't mind. It's that close. It's that close. It's not far off. It's not on the other side of the universe. It's right here. And I couldn't find, I believe it was the Lord that gave me that clip. It's just a good representation. It's that close. It's right next to us. It's just a different realm. It's where the angelic hosts, the demonic princes, and all the spiritual beings live. And you can deny its existence, like 60% of Christians, but that doesn't mean you're right. I can deny the sky is blue. Am I right? No. So the spirit world is as real as this one. It's as real as this one. I'm not crazy. I promise you it's as real as this one. Some people are able to see into it from this world, and some people can't. God chooses who he allows that to happen to. 
It was never supposed to be hidden. The knowledge of it was never supposed to be hidden to us. We were supposed to be aware because then we'd be so much better prepared for battle. So my first point I want to share with you is God wants to reveal hidden knowledge to us. That's my first point. He wants to reveal hidden knowledge to us. Why? Because it is real. Because it's where we do battle. And because what's happening there affects what's happening here. Okay? And what's happening here affects what's happening there. So how do we receive hidden knowledge and learn how to fight from a place of victory? James 4, 7. So give yourselves completely to God. Stand against the devil and the devil will run from you. Other versions say submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. I like this version. Give yourself completely that means every area, the good, the bad, the ugly, the amazing, the weaknesses, the strengths, every area, give yourself completely to God because in that submission, we'll be able to resist what the enemy hurls at us. And in that submission, hidden knowledge is found. So resist means to stand against, like your kids when you ask them to do their chores. They resist them. Am I right? Am I right? Unless y'all kids are like, well, I can't wait to get up and do the dishes. They resist it. Resist is an action word. It means intentional activity. Who remembers verbs, nouns, all that stuff? Resist is a verb, okay? One of the most important things you must resist by the way, Sharon, Shane and Jared already, I must have almost combined their names, already almost shared some of this message. But you'll hear it repeated because you know what? We learned our ABCs not in one day. We learned it by over and over and over and over again practicing. So one of the most important things you must resist are thoughts that the enemy hurls into your brain. You can't just chew on everything, right? You must choose different and when we don't choose different, we end up in a battle we didn't have to be in. So when I'm upset with someone, and, or, and I imagine telling them off, or I imagine anything that isn't what God would do or say about me or anyone else, I am giving access to the enemy at that moment. You understand that? So I need to capture my thoughts. I also need, uh, I need to be aware of the things that are going around in my head and think on the things that are... Right, true, honorable, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, worthy of praise, Philippians 4, 8. We got to think on those things. But I also can't have loose lips. And I'm not talking about sharing somebody's secrets. I'm talking about, well, that person just went on vacation. What an idiot. That person just drove, a stop, drove through a stop sign. What an idiot. Can you believe how they manage their money? Loose lips. Loose lips curse other people without even thinking about it or ourselves don't have loose lips we must actively resist the enemy that sounds like saying the opposite of what you're thinking okay you're feeling beat down you're feeling bad. You're feeling like God's got nothing for you. I know the Lord has good plans for me, plans to prosper and not to harm me, plans for hope in the future. I know that Shane didn't mean to speak to me that way. I know my kids are good listeners. I know that I am healed of the Lord. I know. You understand? I know my bank account is flush and overflowing with money. I have so much extra money, I can give every bit of it to the One House campaign. That's how we begin to exercise what the Lord has put inside of us. And that's how we begin to fight back against the enemy, right? And we put an arrow in him. You'll be up in a little bit. There's your stuff. Even Jesus had to resist the enemy. We think, oh, we're not going to have to. Give me a break. <laughs> if Jesus did, he said we can do everything he did. He won. We can win. This is a battle. So, let me ask you a question. 
I want you to raise your hand if you are going to let a cockroach run all over you. (laughs) You would flick it off, right? Or scream. You would flick that thing off. Am I right? If you got a bee buzzing around your head, are you walking away from the bee? Or are you just going to let them sting you? You're going to walk away. You're going to flick a cockroach off of you. That's what we have to do with those negative thoughts. We flick them off of us. No, I got more than enough money. No, my car is fantastic. No, my kids love Jesus and serve the Lord all the days of their life. I have good friendships. I have good relationships. I have an on fire, deepening, growing relationship with the Lord. Because I know he comes. You're not even saved. My health is good. Right? Listen. Anyone who wants to make a mark for God in this generation has to resist the enemy. Period. There's no other choice and there's no escape. When we don't, he gets stronger, not us. So you have to refuse to be what the enemy wants you to be and do. You have to refuse that. You must insist on God's agenda for your life. You must insist on that. So when you're feeling angry and frustrated and offended, ask yourself, why am I feeling this way? First, have I been thinking about something that's going to make me mad and angry? Or have I opened the door? Have I watched something I shouldn't have watched? Have I read something I shouldn't have read? Have I done, have I opened the door in any way to the spirit of frustration or offense or whatever? Ask why. When we have loose lips and we're super critical, we are ensuring we will be ill-equipped for the battle. like this. I will say it again in a minute. Can you show that number two? Turn off the lights, please. When we have loose lips and are super critical, we are ensuring we will be ill-equipped for the battle. You got that clip, Christina? I think it's going to be number three. Marvel made it into the sermon today. Keep watching. No, it's funny. Watch. Keep watching. When we are super critical, when we gossip, when we're not capturing our thoughts. The Hulk, that's the enemy. The Hulk is the enemy. We are Loki. Watch. Watch. That's what you're allowing the enemy do to you. They can stop it now. Puny God. Who wants that? Not one of us wants that. It is time to watch everything that comes out of our mouth. It's time to stop opening the door. We have to love people as best as we can. And instead of holding them accountable to their past, especially if we've already done it, we have to hold them to their future. You understand that? We have to believe the best and give opportunity after opportunity after opportunity for people to rise up to what God has called them to be. And we also know some people will choose to be whipped around like that. And it would be fantastic if the enemy showed up at our door and just said, here, Elijah, here's the gifts of all the crappy thoughts I want you to think about everybody. Would he take it? He would not take that gift. Noah wouldn't take that gift. Allie and Ava wouldn't take that gift. Faith and Kelly wouldn't take that gift. Jared and Michelle would not take that gift. But every time we take on his thoughts and his idea and his words and his condemnation, we are accepting the gifts that he gives us. Light. 
Ephesians 4, 29 to 32, let no corrupt word come out of your mouth. But if there be any good one for needful edification, that it may give grace to those that hear it. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit with which ye have been sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and heat of passion and wrath and clamor and injurious language be removed from you with all malice and be to one another kind, compassionate, forgiving one another. So as God also in Christ has forgiven you. James 4 8 to 12. Come near to God, and God will come near to you. You sinners, clean sin out of your lives. You who are trying to follow God in the world at the same time, make your thinking pure. Be sad, cry, and weep. Change your laughter into crying and your joy into sadness. Humble yourself in the Lord's presence, and he will honor you. Brothers and sisters, do not tell evil lies about each other. If you speak against your fellow believers or judge them, you are judging and speaking against the law they follow. And when you are judging the law, you are no longer a follower of the law. You have become a judge. God is the only lawmaker and judge. He is the only one who can save and destroy. So it is not right for you to judge your neighbor that is a very serious verse right there. We don't read that a lot in church because this is not fun. But I'm telling you, God is cleaning the house of the Lord, and that's where he will begin. So if you've been feeling convicted or if you've been letting your mouth run rampant, it is time to choose different. My point number two, criticalness, gossip, slander, etc., make me ill-equipped for battle. Now, can you get that clip ready again, the one I want to repeat? Now imagine, you can hit the lights again, submitting yourself to God, resisting the devil. Imagine capturing your thoughts. Imagine using your words to combat the enemy. Imagine holding fast to God's promises no matter what. Imagine, now watch this again. Hopefully. Imagine submitting to God, resisting the devil, capturing your thoughts. Imagine using your words out loud to combat the enemy and hold fast to God's promises no matter what. Hold fast to God's promises no matter what. Does he promise you a good life? Does he promise you a long life? Does he promise you blessings? What does he promise you? Has he promised you health? Did Jesus say, I can do all things they did and even greater works? Did he say that? Did he heal the blind, raise the dead? Did he walk through walls? When you receive a prophetic word and you're, you got to hang on to that word. Because if we do this, if we do this, we are now the Hulk. Do you understand that? We are now the Hulk. We are now the Hulk. We are now the Hulk. And the enemy becomes puny. Turn the lights on, please. We are in a battle. The kingdom of God is colliding with the kingdom of darkness, which means the king is coming. He's on his way. There's a war going on in the heavenlies, but what's happening in the spiritual world will very likely begin to happen in the physical world, but we have help. Hebrews 1, 13 to 14 says, And to which of the angels has he ever said, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Are they not all ministering spirits sent out to serve for the sake of those who are to inherit salvation? I don't have time to read all the scriptures about fallen angels, godly angels, demons, etc. Just know that they're real. The Bible never said they're going away. And you have angels at your disposal. They're not going away. They've always been here. They're always going to be here. We have some assigned to us, to our families, to our church. This whole room is full of them. There's huge ones in each corner. 
Daniel had warring angels for him. Why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we? God is very detailed in the Bible. I mean, read the genealogy in the New Testament. <laughs> read Leviticus. Read Numbers. Some of those books are like hard for me to read because they're like so super detailed. I like some details. Others are. He would say, angels are just for this time. They're going away. They're not. You just need to activate them. Colossians 1, 13 to 14, for he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of God of his dear son who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. We are battling the kingdom of darkness, y'all. We're not battling each other. We are not battling each other. We are fighting satanic forces that the prince of evil, Satan, has put in power. Think of it as mayors, county commissioners, governors, etc., all those governmental units build upon each other and answer ultimately to Satan, right? In an attempt to move people away from the Lord and his purposes for a person, family, city, county, region, or nation. Satan operates in darkness. It's hard to see in the dark. But God's love and his word bring light to the darkness and expose evil. Time with the Father reveals hidden knowledge including demonic strongholds and identities. What kind of hidden knowledge? I had breakfast with somebody a couple weeks ago. The prodigal son. We always talk about the prodigal son returning. Hidden knowledge. What about the son that always had access? He could have had a feast in his name. All he had to do was ask. Never asked. What about Lazarus? We focus on Lazarus being raised from the dead. Do you know it says, I pointed this out to a ministry leader years ago. It says he died for the glory of God to be revealed. That's hidden knowledge. It's right there, but people overlook it. It's hidden from their eyes. Demonic entities control or influence territories, people, regions, making strongholds. A stronghold heavily fortifies a territory, making it hard, but not impossible to crack without the proper tools. There are strongholds in this region brought in by sin. You can identify what spirits are affecting your family, your city, your region. Research your generations. What are you struggling with continually? Ask the Lord to reveal. Is there a hidden sin you need to repent of? Or you do need to repent on behalf of your generations? Maybe you do. That's okay. Do it. It will bring freedom. Demonic principalities over a region usually have less powerful spirits working with them. For example, bitterness can be a ruling spirit. And with it, you'll find resentment, hatred, murder, unforgiveness, temper, violence, anger. We can bind all those other things, but if we don't bind bitterness at its root, it won't go away. Once we get to the root of the ruling spirit, all the other ones can easily be gone. So... We believe it's been revealed to us. We, there's some demonic strongholds in this region. The orphan spirit, the religious or legalistic spirit, and then there is Leviathan that likes to twist what people say. You know, people, they think they hear one thing and then they roll rolling with it, but you got to check in and ask because the enemy wants to twist what's coming out of my mouth and twist it as it's going into Lori's ears. If you don't know, you better ask because that's where offense comes in. All of that stuff's coming in because you think you heard something you did not hear. So my point number three is activate your angels and know the demonic can be overcome. That's okay. You didn't change it. So fine. Activate your angels and know the demonic can be overcome. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 4. So for though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We have weapons. We have divine power. Don't let your flesh win. Keep your eyes and ears tuned to Yeshua. Do you know why we're calling him Yeshua? Because that's his name. Because when they translated it into English, it wasn't quite right. He honors the word Jesus, but it's really Yeshua. Do I call Lori Becky? I mean, do I call Megan Dawn? No, I call them by their name. 
So that's a side note. Hebrews 11.3, by faith we apprehend that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that which is seen should not take its origin from things which appear. We have to begin to see things the way they really are and not the way they appear to be in this physical world. Things seen here are a manifestation of things unseen and vice versa. Basically, what we do here affects the spirit world and what's happening in the spirit world affects here. And I, will ha I have a real life example for you, but it should cause us to watch our words, actions, all that stuff even more. So I knew a man years ago. He was actually a prophet. He was actually a prophet. And where he was, he used to be able to stand up and give words and um, interpret tongues and all of this stuff, right? And he was pure-hearted, a good man, heard from the Lord. But when there was a shift in authority and the prophetic was not honored, he got made fun of. He got made fun of in jest, but he got made fun of. And now, he can barely walk. My husband's grandpa met him years ago and was like 12 years older than him and looked 20 years younger. Because my point number four is what you cripple in the spiritual gets crippled in the physical. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. We must look at things which are seen, physical things, conditions, attitudes of the heart, to perceive things that are not seen. We perceive by faith. Faith goes beyond the realm of the senses. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, While we look not at the things which are seen, like this table and the chairs, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So my fifth point is we perceive by faith. Oh, that's okay. Maybe I skipped a point. That's okay. Anybody heard of our Lauren Sanford? He was a pastor. He passed away. He was a pastor in prophetic voice. He said this. I want you to listen really clearly. Demonic principalities shape the culture and thought of entire societies until their diabolical ways of thinking, the evil they promote, comes to seem good and self-evident to the majority who are being influenced. Those who disagree are then seen as ignorant, the enemy, a threat, and dangerous. Right. Are Christians being attacked and seen as a threat, seen as dangerous, seen as ignorant, seen as stupid? He goes on to say, Scripture records four marks of dominance, the Baal spirit, as it infected Israel. Go read the Old Testament. Consuming self-focus. It's all about me. Rampant sexual immorality. The sacrifice of children. And cutting and self-mutilation. Hmm. Historically, he goes on to say, in every case virtually, the only remedy left for God has been to apply catastrophic national or cultural calamity. Repentance would turn the tide, but it seldom happens once the culture has set its course. I can tell you repentance would turn the tide because, who was it? Abraham Lincoln? Civil War? Is that right, Mr. B? Abraham Lincoln, Civil War? Yeah. He, we were losing the Civil War. Losing Losing the Civil War. Congress said to Abraham Lincoln, we need to repent on behalf of the nation and turn our nation back to the Lord. April 30th, his letter to the nation went out in all the nation's newspapers, repenting, doing 2 Chronicles 7.14, all of that, turning our nation back to the Lord. The very next day, Stonewall Jackson was killed by his own men. Who's Stonewall Jackson? He worked for General Lee, and he was a fantastic military strategist for the South. Also, there was a battle won that led to the Battle of Vicksburg being won. So we got Gettysburg because Stonewall Jackson died because he wasn't there. And we got Vicksburg because 
all on the very next day, May 1st, 1863. Do you think that's a coincidence? We need our nation's leader to get on their knees and repent and turn this nation back to the Lord. He also said God is doing something or is about to, and God's people must wake up and get on board or miss it. We must prepare by means of repentance and a renewed hunger for holiness. I couldn't have said it better myself. Our country's a wreck. It was founded on God's principles. What's evil has become good. What's good has become evil. Sin is the doorway the demonic enter in. That is how they're here. Hebrews 12, 26 to 27. When God spoke from Mount Sinai, his voice shook the earth. But now he makes another promise. Once again, I will shake not only the earth, not only the earth, but the heavens also. This means that all of creation will be shaken and removed so that things unshakable will remain. It's not too late to repent. I want our country to turn back to the Lord. But God may bring calamity on a national level to make that happen. And I'm not saying that to get you to fear. But I am telling you to start preparing. I follow Dutch Sheets. He's an eternal optimist. If you don't know who he is, he's an eternal optimist. He even said in a recent podcast, prepare. What do I mean? Well, number one, don't, don't be afraid. We have authority, right? Jesus said in Luke 10, 19, Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. But get some extra supplies, like food. And water. What if we lose power for three days or three weeks or three months? How would you handle that? What's your plan? What if you can't get food? What if you can't leave your house? What if the demonic show up in plain sight? Make a plan for how you're going to take care of yourself, your kids, any animals you have. What is your plan? Make a plan, not out of fear, out of wisdom. Amen. Psalm 1834 says, He trains my hand for battle and strengthens my arm to draw a bronze bow. He's given us authority. He's trained us for battle. We must use our words well. Do not fear. Stand firm. You have authority. Sober up. It's time to gather your bow and arrows and suit up for battle. The king is close. Look to Yeshua. Not to the left or to the right. He's where you're going to find peace in the storm that's brewing. Now, I realize this message may get me hated, may get the barn hated. Oh, well. If we're hated by the world and most of the church, then we're doing something right. If we're loved by the world, then we're doing something wrong. And it might be uncomfortable, but God did not call us to comfort. I mean, for, he really didn't call us to comfort. We had started a church in our barn. We put a curtain up. Do you think that's comfortable? People think it's weird. We have a menorah. People think it's weird. A shaking is happening upon the earth because the king is coming. And are there biblical examples of preparation? I'll remind you. Noah built an ark. Joseph saved food. Moses and the Israelites anointed their doorposts with blood. Anoint your doorways. Anoint your windows. It says in John, 1 John 2.13, at the end of it, it says, you have won your battle with the evil one. Have faith. Have hope. Not I am hope. I have hope. Because you've already won. We won. We just have to get this physical world to catch up. Okay? So think future. We can choose to live above the fray. We can choose to live an ascended life and walk above the battle by faith. And see the victory. My point number six is prepare from a place of victory. The world's worst is being exposed while God's best is about to happen. We must contend, another verb, and we must be aware we're not going to get a free pass out of warfare. The king is coming to establish his kingdom. Keep your eyes on Yeshua. Yeah, that's right. We need to be a well church in this world. We need to gather people who are lost and bring them here and get them ready. And when you get weary... Get that last clip ready, please. When you get weary, turn the lights off. When you get weary, when you think that you're done, when you think that it's time to give up, just when you think that God is not coming, turn it on. Just when you think that God is not coming.
when you're weary, when you're ready to give up, just when you think he isn't coming. Watch this. Come on. Just when you're ready to give up. Just when you think he isn't coming. Just when you think there's no help on the way. Stand firm. Stand firm. God does not retreat. God does not retreat and neither should we. He will send help. Do you see this? He will send help. He will send help. He will send help. God does not resist and neither should we. God does not retreat. Sorry, God does not retreat and neither should we. Come on. You've got an army of angels surrounding you. Look at that. This is the best way I could describe it is endgame. Avengers. Come on. All those people are on your side. They're on my side. They're on Cody's side. They're on Evan's side. They're on Jared's side. Michelle's side. Karen's side. They are on our side. <laughs> All right. You can turn that off now. Oh, there he is. There's a the big one. Okay. Come on. We cannot lay down and accept. We must fight the fight. It begins in our minds. We have to be warriors. There is no other choice. We must stand firm. Put your arrows in your back. Elijah, you can turn the lights on another time, please. Put your arrows on your back. Put your bow in your hand. And we're in an archery place. There's a target right there. Just throw the whole one. Or whatever. I don't know if it's a thrower. What it's called. I'm not. <laughs> He's not going to screw up. He was third in the nation in mounted archery when he was like 15. Okay? He ain't going to screw up. Right there. Put that whole arrow right there. They're at your disposal. Watch your words. Just do it. Yeah, just do it. Shoot that arrow. Come on. You got these in your arsenal. You got these in your, you got a bow, you got an arrow, you got a sword. Come on. There we go. There we go. Now, this is a life of sin, criticalness, gossip. That's a life of sin. It's not going to. Hmm. That's a broken arrow. Thank you very much. You got it. You got a choice. I'm going to shoot whole arrows or I'm going to shoot broken ones. It's your choice. The descending throne of God is on its way. He is coming as king. He's over the sin and perversion of this world. We must humble ourselves, repent, and fight. You must be the new, which is really a return to the old, but it's not the Old Testament old. We are battling for our right to return to the garden. Do you want to, listen, we are battling for our right to return to the garden because the enemy is not welcome there. Isaiah 41, 10, fear not, I'm almost done. I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold you up with my victorious, righteous right hand. Joshua and Caleb, they believed God, and they were not dismayed at the giants in their land. You'd think the orphan spirit, religious spirit, Leviathan scare me. No, they do not. Nope. Should any of that scare you? Heck no. Be not dismayed. God is on your side. Joshua led the army around Jericho. They didn't have to lift a finger to fight. Gideon chose not to be dismayed at the 300 remaining. Daniel went into a furnace. Sorry, his friends went into a furnace. He slept in a den with a lion. They took ground, and so can we. That's why we're here. Are you going to give up your inheritance? Are you going to let the enemy win? 
Don't speak doubt, speak faith. Don't speak death, speak life. Don't speak judgment, speak love. I know it looks dire out there, but tell me what God can't do. Tell me what God can't do. Is God not big enough to save, to turn this country around? Is the God we serve the same God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, Gideon, Joseph, Moses, Jehoshaphat, the apostles, the early church founders, William Seymour of Azusa Street, Kenneth Hagin of Rama, Oral Roberts, Billy Graham, Reinhard Bonnke. Is that the God we serve? Yes. Or does he hide under the covers? If God is for us, who can be against us? He that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. Angels are prepared to do battle. Stop letting your words frustrate your angels. It is time to stand up, rise, shoulder to shoulder, arm in arm. Gather your arrows. Gather your bows. Get ready for fight and prepare. Now repeat after me. Can you put the declaration up there? Everybody stand up. Repeat after me. I am redeemed by the hand of the devil by the blood of Jesus. From. I maintain my redemption rights. And I proclaim that through the blood of Jesus, thrones, dominions, altars, principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual hosts of wickedness. And every satanic work have no authority over me. I declare that the enemy is deprived of any access to my life and destiny. I maintain my God given position in heavenly places. And the enemy is under my feet. Absolute victory is mine in Yeshua's name. Come on. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's stay standing. Let's stay standing if you can, if you can, if you can. If you've got questions, if you need prayer, come on up here. We're going to pray with you. We're going to answer any questions you have. If you have to leave, you can go. We're going to go back into one more worship song because we're going to win. We've already won. We're going to keep fighting. We're going to keep rising. We're going to keep marching. Get your weapons. Get everything you need. We have won the battle. You want to find out what's going on around here? Download the Church Center app. Grab a bulletin. You're welcome to stay. We're going to tear down afterward. If not, we understand. We'll see you Friday or next week.